Look at this baby dance. Why does this flying cat poop rainbows? Should you be afraid of this bear? These are all the questions we're going to ask as we take a trip through meme history, looking at the first memes, travel through different distinct eras of memedom, and find our way back to modern meme times. Before we start, write a comment below of what your favorite meme in all of history is. The comment with the most likes wins this cookie. But what even is a meme? Well, the first use of the word meme dates back to 1976, where Richard Dawkins referred to memes in his book, The Selfish Gene, as he was trying to conceptualize ideas that spread throughout generations with core bounds. It's from this first concept that brought us memes, or at least helps us define what a meme is. In modern history, we first start seeing meme-like concepts in print media back in the 1920s, like this one, or this one. This begins a period I like to consider the beginning, spanning from 1921 to 1999. In this period, one of the first memes that transcended age, location, and culture was that of Kilroy. Kilroy was here was a meme that became popular throughout World War II in forms of graffiti or US service members around the world. It was so common that Hitler even theorized that it was a codename for a high-ranking Allied spy. But while this might be one of the first memes, it wasn't really a meme like we know them today. The digital era brought Baby Cha-Cha, a dancing baby animation which spread through the internet like wildfire back in 1996. This is widely regarded as the first digital meme, but what exactly was a meme? The concept still escaped the internet at this time. Near the end of the beginning period, culture was becoming connected enough and digital media was becoming a thing that people realized they could share concepts and ideas that would be universally recognizable online. The end of the 90s and Y2K brought the beginning of a brief blip in memedom, but the beginning of its modern foundation. Now began the experimental period, from 2000 to 2004. This is a period where memes as a concept had materialized enough that they were part of culture, but the exact definition of what a meme was was still pretty vague. It could be anything from a funny video to a bizarre gif, or gif, don't hate me, or even just a still image. Meme culture was finding its way. This period brought us Peanut Butter Jelly Time, a dancing banana gif, first posted on Off Topic in 2002. In 2003, we saw the Badger 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 Flash animation and the growth of 4chan, the internet subculture hub which would spawn many memes throughout the years. This experimental period was bookended by internet classics like the Numa Numa Dance in 2004 and the first Harry Potter Puppet Pals episode released in 2003. It was this period where the internet started realizing how wide-ranging memes could be. The media of memes was explored. But 2005, 2005 began the evolutionary period, a six-year period stretching all the way to 2011, where just what a modern meme was, at least how we know them today, was fully cemented. It was the birth of many meme concepts we still have today. Memes found a wide-ranging cultural footing in this period. It was the birth of rage comics, classic internet memes still around today, and the definition of traditional meme formats. It was also a period where there was mass adoption due to how easy it seemed making a popular meme was. Anyone could do it, so everyone wanted their made-up internet points. In 2005, we saw the growth of YouTube and Reddit as meme hubs on the internet, but nothing was like 2006. This year was the big bang of classic internet memes. Lolcats, Evolution of Dance, Fred, Over 9000, and the top text, bottom text meme format exploded in this year, originating a few years earlier on 4chan, but it had finally bubbled up into the mainstream. 2007 brought us Tumblr, the first Rickroll which would become one of, if not the largest universal meme at the time by 2008. We also saw Charlie Bit My Finger, Yo Dog memes, the Gummy Gummy Bear song, and Chocolate Rain. By now, memes were everywhere, but they weren't universal yet. Memes were still largely standalone content that required some talent? 
to make. While top text, bottom text content had started to take over, in 2008 we saw it explode further along with the birth of Rage Comics. These trends were growing everywhere. We also saw cool story bro memes and text memes from popular internet boards. By 2008, anyone with enough internet knowledge could make a viral meme, and we saw this trend continue on for the remainder of the era. In 2010, we saw the birth of the controversial pedo bear meme. In 2011, the evolutionary period was closing, where memes transformed from unique one-offs into universally creatable concepts. The bookend to this period was Nyan Cat, Chuck Testa, Not Bad, and The Friday Song in 2011. Did Rebecca Black's song kill the golden era of memes? Well, maybe. But it ushered in a period of meme dominance. But also subtle transition. The transitionary period, stretching from 2012 to 2014, was one of memes further defining themselves as the language of the internet, but also starting to develop into universal symbols for all ages. While this period built off the evolutionary years, it was a time where the idea of meme culture started to dominate the internet. 2012 brought the ain't nobody got time for that meme, face memes, and funny snapshots of people like Overly Attached Girlfriend and Bad Luck Brian. 2012 also brought us Grumpy Cat. But just like YouTube and Reddit fostered their own meme explosions, the birth of Vine in 2013 created its own explosion of video-oriented short format memes. It was during this period where the idea of spending hours staring at your screen looking at memes emerged. In the early years, memes were sporadic, but during this transition, looking at memes became an activity. But 2014 ended the transition. It was now, in 2015, that we entered the modern era of memes. It was the cultural explosion. This era, the era we find ourselves in today, is dominated by inside jokes, subcultures, and memes that aren't topical. They require years of knowledge of meme culture to fully appreciate. At the beginning of this period, memes fractured into different sects. No longer was a specific meme universally funny by definition. They often required relation or connection. There were normie memes, or memes that your mom or grandmother might share. These memes can range from downright cringy to mainstream meme templates used to discuss pop culture. These are memes that companies might share as advertisements without too much effort. Then there's dank memes, shared by the real memers who have their own cultures and a way of communicating. I'd say dank memes are still somewhat normal nowadays and culturally accepted. Dank memers evolved from being on the fringe at the start of 2015 to now what I'd consider fairly mainstream. Today we have another category for the fringe, the deep fried memes. The type of memes that if shared, your friends and family might start to worry about your mental health. And of course, there's probably some deep, deep fried memes, but we're going to exclude that from the overall presentation of this video. But now that we've defined the fractures we saw grow in meme subculture, back to the memes we've seen in our modern era. 2015 brought us the blue and gold dress, Netflix and chill, this is Bill, and of course, the Ty Lopez knowledge meme. 2016 brought us Dat Boy, Harambe, and other subculture inside jokes. This year, memes dove even deeper into their own subculture. 2017 brought us Salt Bay, Stonks, He Bro Tech, He Attack, Pickle Rick, and the emergence of memes being pulled from old snapshots of 90s and early 2000s cartoons, like SpongeBob memes. 2018 saw the birth of TikTok, the surprised Pikachu meme, and of course, Big Chungus, a meme that escaped memedom subculture into fair normalcy, at least in how frequently it reared its giant overweight bunny ears. The last several years have been dominated by thousands of millions of memes that will likely make it into a version of this video 10 years down the line. When do you think the next era of meme history will begin? Has it already started? What do you think of this high-level overview and breakdown of the history of modern memes? Be sure to leave a comment below, and make sure you comment your favorite meme from all of history to see if it wins the cookie. Memes are now part of culture. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching!